work to stop the Jade Fire from spreading any further. With recent lockdown and actions once again, individuals are searching for new ways to stay active within the community. Now, families can participate in a nighttime bike ride around the city. Canyon News reporter Shalisa Kruplan is here to tell us more. You may have seen them around the Santa Clarita Valley or on your local bike trail. The Sunday Fun Day bike team has created a new event in order to keep their community united. After coming up with the idea with a group of friends, creator Joe Turk decided to start a free bike ride event. Shortly after, Turk decided to spread the word on Instagram in order to get the community involved. Me and my friends just ride bikes around here um, and then we figured why not utilize the page and get a free community bike ride going and um, thankfully it's grown. We have, a, we have people showing up that we've never met before which is really cool so we're just going to see where it goes. Starting at Santa Clarita Lanes, participants of the event embark on an 11 mile bike ride around the Santa Clarita Valley. Even with the distance, this team has never been closer. Yeah, so we try and switch it up every time, um, but most of the time we're going to go towards Valencia because there's so much bike paths over there. But yeah, we try to keep it slow paced. It's, it's everyone's welcome. Like no rider left behind. If you have a flat tire, like I'll stay behind, make sure you're okay. Um, but yeah, it's just fun. Everyone's everyone's welcome, all ages. Whether it be for an evening workout or a fun and activity, families all over the city are coming to participate. We bought bikes in quarantine and so we've been biking a lot more and this looked fun. We wanted to see if we could do it. Yeah, there was a lot of people. <laughs> I asked my kids they wanted to go bike riding at night and they said yes and they're super stoked to be here today. Families can meet up for the event every other Sunday at 6 p.m. for a night of fun and quality time together. For Canyons News, I'm Shalisa Curlpun. Last January, the Westfield Valencia Town Center was set and approved to integrate a huge construction project until the pandemic brought into a major home. And now, as changes to those original plans are being announced, Chris Regalic, give us the details. The Patios Connection Project for the Westfield Valencia Town Center has been under numerous delays from the pandemic. Plans would see the demolition of the former Sears building and the inclusion of a second Costco with a gas station in Santa Clarita. Originally planned with a luxury cinema, gym, and even a rooftop parking lot, all of which have just been cut from the project. Associate planner with Santa Clarita's planning division, Dave Peterson, comments on the mall's official decision to minimize the project. Certainly it's, it's unfortunate that the downsizing has to occur, but at the same time, uh, it's fortunate, I think, that Westfield's in a position to pursue uh, the Costco uh, and continue that portion of the project at this time. Movie theaters and gyms have been hit the hardest in California, and with the ongoing closure at the cinema next door, citizens in the community will have to wait patiently during this absence of entertainment. Movie theaters and the arts in general, I think, play a really big role in any community. And it's sad when those components of the community have to be impacted. And uh, this is a very big deal that we're going through right now. And there's a reason why these industries, not just theaters, but lots of others are being impacted. We're hoping that when all of the COVID stuff goes away or is solved, uh, that we'll be able to have our existing theaters that are currently closed up and running again. In addition, uh, there will be a Lemley Theater that'll be open and operating in the uh, Main Street area of Old Town New Hall. So we, we just kind of have to grit our teeth and, uh, and try to get through it as best we can, be responsible in what we do, follow our health orders. And I think the more we do that, the, the sooner we can get back to business as usual, get the theaters back open, get the retail back open. I'm looking forward to it, uh, but I think, um, you know, I think there's still some work to do. Reporting for the Canyons Newsroom, I'm Christopher Kulik, signing off. As the pandemic has enforced rules for this holidays, Christmas this year, bring families together as they decorate their homes. Jenny and her family fill their home with decorations for happiness for the holidays. Canyon News reporter Natalie Jimenez is here to tell us more. As the pandemic has brought some downfalls, Christmas this year has brought back the joy and cheer for Jenny's family. 2020 has been a really difficult year, not only for our family, but for everybody across the world. And Christmas was the one time that we felt we could really decorate and have a little bit of normal, uh, a little bit of a normal holiday. Uh, Christmas is always something that's very big in our family and we can't celebrate it like we usually do but decorating this year has made us feel a lot closer. Decorating their household for Christmas brought out some unique decorating from each of them and brought them closer as a family. This really felt a little different for us. Usually 
it's just a couple of us duck reading. Uh, this year has made us really realize how much of a family we are. And as silly as it sounds, we were decorating all together and it really brought us together more as a family um, for us to be able to do this one thing all together at once and everybody have their idea in the house be decorated by everybody. You can see the quirkiness in every decoration and who brought it to the table. So I'm just thankful that we were able to do that together as a family. Christmas has been a light for many this year as homes and their neighborhood fill their streets with decorations. From Canyons News, this is Natalie Jimenez. Meet the season student who attended a program aboard that landed him in Sweden. During Brandon's Ashford first year at season, he was studying communications and journalism. Then, one fateful day, he would received news that changed his life. The library ran into a friend who said she was looking for study abroad programs. And just within that time frame, I ended up landing on Sweden um, because it specifically asked for my major, it specifically asked for mass media, uh, communication studies, and journalism students. And so, plus, the, when I looked at the program and what it had to offer me, I do believe that it was, in, it was in line with my, I would say, academic goals in terms of like what I was trying to get out of my education. The program took an approximately one year for Brandon to complete. And then when I got back, I graduated. You know? yeah. <laughs> so it was like one of those things. But... What it did for me, like the confidence it gave me, the knowledge it gave me, the relationships I cultivated, the experience in itself, like it was so much, it was so worth it. And to, to this day, you know, I feel more confident as a person. I feel more well-rounded as, I like, guess, as, as like a human being. Like, I feel like my perspective is a lot, you know, I could take in a lot, you know, I'm aware of certain cultural things now. Because when I was over there, I just didn't meet what was great. I just didn't meet Swedish people. I actually met other exchange students from other foreign countries, you know, so. Now, Brandon Ashford has a position at college. DEI assistant, diversity, equity, and inclusion. About the barriers that students face in all phases of their academic career, and I try to eliminate them. And so I work across multiple, multiple teams. You know, we're in charge of putting mentorship programs in place. I'm working student, student to student. Uh, mentorship peer-to-peer. -peer. Reporting for Kenya's News, I'm Charles Gavario.